Survival TV shows and movies have made a lot of people believe that they would be able to draw on their knowledge if ever placed in such a situation. Don't think watching survival shows will automatically make you a prepared person. In fact, some tips on these shows can get you into even more dangerous situations. Here are the top 10 survival tips that do more harm than good. Number 10. It's important to find a food supply immediately. Food is essential if you want to survive in the wild outdoors. Without food, you run out of energy and eventually starve to death. So it's quite logical to find a food source first, right? Not really, because an average person can live for weeks without eating food. In fact, Mahama Gandhi, at age 74, was able to survive for 21 days without any food solely surviving by sipping water every now and then. Instead of finding food, focus on finding potable water. Dehydration will set in faster compared to hunger and this will greatly affect your chances of survival out in the wild. Once you have found a source of drinkable water, locating or building a shelter is your next objective. Food should always be your last priority. Without water or shelter, your chances of survival dwindle every passing minute, so prioritize these two needs over food. Number 9. Play dead to avoid bear attacks. This is perhaps the most well-known survival tip of them all. Playing dead in order to avoid getting mauled by a bear. Surprisingly, it does work, but only for brown grizzly bears, since if you run, the bear will think you're prey and continue chasing you. And they will catch you because they can run at sustained speeds, faster than Olympic sprinters. Try to act dead for other bear species though, like the black bear, and you're likely to end up dead for real. Survival experts recommend packing bear pepper spray whenever you're traveling to areas where bears are known to frequent. Should you encounter one, try to make yourself smaller and retreat very slowly, not making any noises that may serve to provoke them. If contact is inevitable, use the bear pepper spray directly in their face. Not only does it deter them from attacking you, they're also attracted to the residue left by the pepper spray, allowing you to escape while it's distracted. If you don't have pepper spray with you and a black bear decides to attack, fight back. Black bears often bluff when attacking and would rather go for easy food than someone who could fight back. So, stand your ground and fight back. Use anything and everything as a weapon. Rocks, sticks, fists, and your teeth. Aim your blows on the bear's face, particularly the eyes and snout. Do not try to climb a tree to escape since they're excellent climbers. Black bears are usually non-aggressive if you ever encounter one in the wild. Try to avoid contact whenever possible because no amount of plain dead will save you should they deem you as a threat. Number 8. Suck Out Snake Bite Venom This survival tip has been played out in several movies and TV shows, as doing this act presumably removes venom from the victim who is bound for an untimely death due to the snake's venomous bite. In reality, however, this will only serve to worsen the victim's condition. Studies show that trying to cut and suck out venom won't help at all. In fact, it'll only help damage tissue around the bite and hence, help the venom spread faster. It's an act of futility that delays proper treatment as it's just not possible for anyone to suck hard or fast enough to remove any of it. Before it starts spreading around the body, do not try to halt the spread of venom by applying a tourniquet either. It's also pointless and won't stop the venom. In fact, it may just provoke unnecessary damage to your limb. Instead of emulating this supposedly life-saving act, medical experts recommend first trying to remember the snake's appearance, so that medical experts can identify the snake for its anti-venom. Then calm down and place the wound below your heart. This will slow down the spread of the venom. If someone is there with you, have them follow out all the next steps so you could try to relax, possibly laying down to slow your heart rate and prevent the venom spreading. Do not wash the wound as the leftover venom can help in identifying the snake that bit you. Some doctors can use the correct anti-venom to heal you. Next, cover the wound with loose bandages or clothing to keep it from getting infected by bacteria. Finally, call the emergency services, or if you don't have access to a phone, walk at a leisurely pace towards the nearest hospital. Instead of trying to remedy the injury yourself, it's best to let medical experts handle this you might end up risking your life trying to follow such an outdated technique to treat a snake bite. The truth is that most snake bites, even from the most dangerous snakes, are not always fatal. Sea snakes, for example, have some of the most potent venom in the world, yet about 80% of reported bites end up being dry, meaning no venom ends up being ejected. Just don't be fooled by the initial pain or the lack of it. 
Some bites, such as from copperheads, as painful from the start, whereas once from coral snakes take several hours to appear. Number 7. Eating snow can rehydrate you. Snow is literally frozen water, and as said earlier, water is needed in order to replenish your lost fluids when you're trapped in the wild. Logically, snow should have the same hydrating effects as water, right? Technically, yes. But if you melt it first, eating it directly, however, will not only fail to hydrate you, but also decrease your body's internal temperature, which can lead to hypothermia in severe cases. Not only that, snow on the ground could collect several microorganisms and bacteria that could be very harmful to the body. If you are in dire need of water, try to locate a water source first. If you cannot find any, find snow that is clearly white and free from any impurities and then melt it until you're able to drink it. Remember, snow should not be consumed directly. They're not like those frozen treats who get from supermarkets after all. Number 6. Rubbing frostbitten in skin will warm it up. Being exposed to extremely cold environments without proper equipment significantly increases the risk of frostbite. Most people believe that rubbing frostbitten skin will help warm them up. In truth, this only makes the problem worse as the friction generated from rubbing the skin will severely damage the afflicted tissues. Should you get frostbitten, the first thing you should do is to seek shelter from the cold environment. Cover yourself up with warm clothing or a blanket if available and drink warm liquids to restore your internal body temperature and prevent the possible onset of hypothermia. Do not attempt to warm the frost in area with a fireplace, as this might cause burns. If numbness and pain persists, have someone seek help immediately as severe frostbite can result to amputation of the frost, bitten in part if left untreated. Number 5. Moss grows on the north side of trees. Lost in the woods without a compass? Not a problem. Just look where the moss grows on the trees as it always grows on the north, according to one survival tip. Unfortunately, following this tip will make you more lost than a blind man in a forest. The belief behind the survival tip is that moss grows commonly on the north side, due to it getting less sunlight as the sun moves from east to west. Perfect conditions for moss, you would think. However, this is not a very useful tip because in the woods, trees could be shade from any direction. Therefore, moss will grow anywhere on a tree as long as sunlight cannot reach it. What's important is that it must be cool and damp as these environments create the perfect condition for moss to grow on. If you're planning to take a trip and don't plan on getting lost anytime, it's best to take the advice of real survivor experts invest in a compass. Number 4. Prioritize having a roof on your shelter. If you've seen many TV shows about surviving in the wild, you'll see that they built shelters with roofs over their head, prioritizing it over anything else. After all, surviving in the wild means you must be prepared to brave the elements, whether it be the scorching sun or the cold rain, and a roof over your head will help you in doing just that right, technically, yes. However, most of these shows often miss out on the most important detail when building a shelter, a bed. You may ask, why would you need one? You could always lay on the ground, right? Yes, you can, but you risk freezing yourself to death if you do that, especially if it's wet. You see the ground could get really cold, especially during the night. So it's important to have something that will help insulate your body during those cold nights. Sure, having a roof is important, but trees can provide you with enough shade and protection. What you should do is build a raised, insulated bed out of sticks, leaves, and grass. First lay down two thick logs out parallel to each other at a distance relative to your height. Add a third log into the middle to give it more structural integrity. Next, locate some long, thick sticks and place them on top of the platform. Now that the platform is complete, it needs insulating properly. You could top it with grass or leaves, but ideally try to shave branches off evergreen trees and place them. After that's complete, you could then go ahead and construct an overhead shelter in the form of an A-frame or lean-to. But in terms of keeping you warm, the insulated bed should be a priority. Number 3. Punch a shark to stop an attack. Shark attacks rarely happen. In fact, you're more likely to die from a lightning strike compared to getting attacked by a shark. But suppose you end up in such a predicament. What would you do? Once survival tips suggest that you punch a shark to deter them from attacking you. Simple, right? Sure, if you can even land a punch successfully, that is. Test it out yourself in a swimming pool and see how ineffective this strategy is. The best way to avoid shark attacks is to swim away from them calmly because there's a chance that they haven't noticed you yet. 
If it encounters imminent, poke the shark's eye using your finger. If that won't dissuade them from attacking you, hit the gills with any blunt object you might have in your possession. Hit it repeatedly until it decides to let you go. Remember to keep your eyes on the shark while swimming away to safety. Number 2. Locate a water source immediately in a desert. Suppose you find yourself stuck on a desert with a dwindling water supply. The first and foremost course of action to take is to locate a water source to prevent dehydration, correct? Not at all, because you'd end up sweating a lot, losing vital body fluids in the process. What you should do is to sit in the shade and wait for night to arrive when the desert is at its coolest. If you're feeling thirsty, drink all your water instead of rationing it. People who have died from dehydration have been found to have water in their bottles after rationing, so keep a clear head. Keeping yourself hydrated is a must to survive in the wild. Once nighttime arrives, you're free to roam around and look for a source of drinkable water. Another related desert survival myth is that you could drink water stored inside a cactus. Drinking it, however, will do more harm than good. Drinking cactus water will often result in a number of problems, such as diarrhea, nausea, vomiting and sometimes paralysis as it contains highly toxic alkaloids harmful to humans. Instead of drinking cactus water, look for places where vegetation grows, as it signifies underground water. Look at Kenya's a mountain basis, as well as low terrains often contain water sources. Water may be scarce in the desert, but if you know where to look for it, you may be able to survive for days. Number 1. Boiling water will make any water supply clean. So you found a water source, but you're not sure whether it's clean enough to drink. The solution. Boil the water, and it'll be completely safe to drink. Or so the so-called experts claim. The truth is simply boiling the water will not make any water safe to drink. Sure, it'll kill the bacteria and microorganisms that may harm your body. But no matter how long you boil the water, it will not remove harmful sediments present in the water. Before boiling the water, filter it first using a clean white. Pour the water through the cloth and into the container. The cloth will serve as a makeshift filter, removing sediments and other visible impurities from the water. Once the water has been filtered completely, boil the water to kill off the bacteria. Doing this additional step will allow you to have portable water without the risk of contracting waterborne diseases. Surviving the wild is no easy feat, but if you arm yourself with the right knowledge, you could get through whatever ordeals you may face in the wild. Do you have any other survival tips you could share? Let me know by leaving a comment down below. Thanks for watching.